surprise. That is huge. That is huge. By the way, we have a lot of energy up on stage. Wait, 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 so wait, wait, we're going to wake you up. On. Oh, I are, like our echoes. Are we live streaming right now? No. Can you, you guys let us know when our Can you guys let us know when the audio is on? It's on. Okay, great. I'm so and, glad. And live around the world? Great. And live around the world. Oh my god, and those are our photos. <laughs> it's fantastic. Really? We're going to have a uh, competition no. of whose headshot is more Should I tweet weird. that the link that is, we're going live at? Or no? Yeah, what's the link? What's the link? I'll, I'll tweet it. Oh, we have some more people. Look at this. What is it? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nappy.org. Was that just the regular link? Nappy.org. Oh, you don't want to give it the direct link? OK, guys, let's focus. Nadby.org slash live stream. 45 minutes to impart a lot of value oh, we, to our audience. Yeah, here we're we go. We're let's do this. Let's go. Um, so we want to wait for the last few people no. to sit? Well, no. Just, there's okay. no more chairs available. Right. So. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for coming out bright and early to chat today. Um, this is the nexus of technology and entertainment discussion. I have some great people um, with me today. They are friends of mine, but they're also influencers and leaders in the industry. Julia Allison at my right. She is a uh, tech and social media syndicated columnist yes. and journalist. Yes, thank you. <laughs> as well as an honor personality, I like to say. Thank you. Eric Kuhn, who is the head of the social media department for the United Talent Agency, otherwise known as UTA. And introduce yourself, Shira. And I am Shira Lazar. I am the co-founder of a site and live interactive talk show for the digital age called What's Trending. Check it out at whatstrending.com. And so we're going to be talking about some of the trends, the things we've seen here, some of the things that from being at Natby, we've seen that people haven't really touched on. We're going to predict some of the things to look forward to in 2012. And definitely, depending on where you're at in the industry, whether you're advertisers, content creators, distributors, I'd be interested to hear where you're all at, you know, how you can take advantage of those trends to reach bigger audiences and monetize and make more money and really be where things are going right now. So you guys have been here for the past three days. I just got here, not to call myself out. Two hours ago, live Two hours ago, LA. I did it because. Sure took a red eye. Exactly. That's dedication. Um, dedication. So, but I wanted, from what you've seen here at Natby this year, what trends are you seeing to people talk about? What excites you? And what have you seen that hasn't really been touched upon? Well, look, I have old school paper and pen. Eric was like, what is that in your hand? Um, I, you know, I've been to a couple of the panels. I was a little concerned about some of the jargon that I've been hearing that I wasn't sure actually meant anything. Um, but I'll tell you what, what I see. Um, I don't think that the future of television is television. I think the future of television is content and I think it's a diversification of revenue streams. Um, I, see, um, I see brands being built. I think the smart TV shows are doing things, um, like for example, Mad Men had a, a collaboration with Banana Republic where they produced clothing. Um, True Blood had a collaboration with Sephora where they actually did red lipstick. Mm -hmm. um, you see, uh, the, the, we were talking about this earlier, the um, gamification of some of these shows where they're looking into doing items, which are those um, small things that you can purchase for like 99 cents. Maybe it's a ringtone. Maybe it's a desktop screensaver. And these things or add up. brands like Lady Gaga partnering with a Farmville right. to create, you know, obviously she's a huge brand. Not everything is as gigantic as Gaga. But how can you really think outside the box and be creative to create partnerships with technology brands and startups to really get your message out there and connect with a bigger audience and be creative about it so people want to engage with your brand in a bigger way? Right. And the thing that I'm really obsessed with right now is going um, beyond just product placement but really focusing on... Um, affiliate sales, the idea that at the end of Gossip Girl, you could, in theory, have all of those items that the characters have worn placed into a shopping cart in a, in a, in a beautiful web app, and you could purchase them with one click. And you literally wouldn't have to enter in your credit card information, sort of an iTunes model or an Amazon one-click model. Um, that frictionless um, system of, of purchasing items that you've seen on celebrities, I think, is the future of making money on 
content. Well, yeah, that's interesting because I think it's going to be beyond having a site where you can do that. Definitely right. there'll be like their own, shows will have their own Tumblr blog or Amazon right. affiliate sales where you can buy the things incorporated in that show. But I even see it as um, a step beyond that where you will have an app that there'll be a sync technology where while you're watching something and you see that red dress, you could literally press pause on the app, whether it's an iPad or a phone that you're using while you're watching the show, and you can directly click on that dress to go directly to the site to purchase that. And we'll see that as well. You know, sports is, there's a huge future with that, with, um, you know, second screen experience where whether it be your fantasy football league or if you're following one of your fantasy football stars and in the real game, you can purchase his jersey, you know, or you can go, I, there's, there's so many different um, possibilities with that to really extend the experience for monetization outside the actual content. So what are you seeing, Eric? Yeah. Well, I think, I, think, I think three things, having gone to a bunch of panels yesterday also, were really missing, I think. Um, the first is there was, there was a lot of talk about webisodes, but there was no talk about episodes, right? There's a lot of talk about the second screen and about using these devices uh, and cell phones, but where's the content that's being created specifically for, the, for an app, for, for a mobile device? I think that's the first thing. The second thing is a lot of talk uh, and there are people at this conference from around the world, but there wasn't really a lot of talk about creating content for around the world, right? Mm -hmm. And if you look at social media and if you look at the internet, so it's, funny, it's a yeah. worldwide place, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and you know, 70 to 80% of Twitter's Facebook posts come from outside the US, and it's important that we have an eye sort of on, on the entire world and think sort of big picture, and I, and I didn't really hear that a lot uh, during the past couple of days. Uh, and the third thing I think I would say is that there was a lot of talk about talking, right? There was a lot of talk about creating content. There was a lot of talk about, about creating stuff and, and giving it out to the world. But there was a very little talk, if not no talk, about listening. And that's also the power of the internet and the power of social media, is to put out a brand and, and to listen, right? Mm -hmm. Is to get the feedback, is to see what people are interested in. And, and I like to say, uh, SMI is greater than TMI, right? Social media intelligence is greater than too much information. And I think we need to stop talking about talking and stop talking about creating and start talking about actually listening to what people but are saying. How can, I guess, producers and networks listen? I mean, do you think there's a fear in listening too much because they just want to create, like what Steve Jobs did? He created, he, he didn't do focus groups. He says, this is what I predict the audience will want, and that became the next thing. What are your thoughts on that? How can networks and shows listen more? Sure, but I mean, as, as you're going through casting process, you know, the, the casting process, I'm hearing specifically as a talent agent, people want talent that has a big social graph, right? So, mm -hmm. so inherently, this world has become so social. Inherently, people are talking. And I don't think you have to live and die by what people are saying, but I think it's important that we hear what people are saying. Are people going to really use the YouTube channels? And if so, why? And, and I think there's focus groups that are out there that are free now that we have to tap into. We don't have to necessarily make every decision about you know, what we hear online, um, but I, I think it's important that we start listening more. There's two things that you said that um, really hit me in terms of the global nature of our content. It's interesting. Um, we're producing specials leading up to the Oscars with ABC and Oscar.com. We started it uh, yesterday analyzing the social media buzz around the Oscars, and only 37% of the social media buzz came from the United States. Which, right. I mean, the Oscars is obviously a huge <laughs> legacy Worldwide, brand, yeah. but it really proves the power of extending it beyond, you know, where we are and where the content creators are. If you see some of the biggest YouTube stars, they're doing meetups around the world, and they're seeing 1,500 people come and meet them. So we really need to think much bigger. Um, something else that you pointed out about listening, it'll be really interesting to see as, you know, the YouTube money comes in, this $100 million dollar fund, a lot of independent creators got, but a lot of more known creators right. like the Ben Silverman, the Electus, um, and also some networks and brands and magazines and publishers. You know, the listening part will be huge to that. How do you really build a community that matters? Because in the past, we could just produce something and put it out there and just, okay, if, if it sticks and if there's an audience, great, otherwise move on. But I think content n nowadays and the future of it is beyond that. It's about you know being around for a while. It's about listening and engaging. I always say the web is like cheers. You can't just come in and expect someone to buy you a drink. You know you need to hang out. They need to get to know you. They need to know that you're passionate 
about the community and the journey. Are and that guys, goes a long way. Are you guys hearing, I mean, obviously the, the YouTube content, the, the $100 million is so big right now. Inside, the, inside Miami at the second in time, right. inside Hollywood, maybe inside New York, where, you know, where we're all from. But, but are you hearing it sort of on Main Street? Are people buzzing about the YouTube channels? No. Are they getting excited about it? Or has it really leapt off the pages of Variety into you know, a place where, where every day people and content creators are, are really excited about it? Are you hearing that buzz out there? Um, not beyond the business press. I'm not, but I also don't necessarily know that it's time yet. I don't know that they've put out launching. the push they to earn media. Right. right, and I think, um, I think you know, we probably, uh, you know, if YouTube is smart, and I'm pretty sure they are, we'll see a New York Times Magazine cover on it. I mean, they or maybe a, a New Wired Yorker cover article. Yeah. I mean, the press is there in terms of... What's it's starting the, to, yeah. to talk about it as a trend in terms of, um, you know, the future of television, but I don't know that you're necessarily seeing the individual press pushes for the channel. I think you will see it, and I think that that's actually something that we should mention. Um, the lack of attention towards earned media from some of online properties, web shows, that kind of thing, uh, even, even, frankly, YouTube stars, um, is... Uh, has always struck me as strange. I think it, um, earned media is still a really important um, process to go through mm -hmm. for getting attention, especially with um, the, the surfeit of content online. I like to say that um, the web is sort of like a library dumped onto a football field. You know that there's good stuff in there, but how do you find it? And that's been a discussion that's been going for quite some time. But I think we are we need to focus as, as content providers on how can we um, how can we get that message out there, and once you have, let's just say, you, okay, content first, great. So you have great content, okay, but how do you get people to notice it for the first time? And then, how do you remind them about this? We were talking about this earlier. Um, on a general level, the, the idea of an appointment-based show, which is how we did things in the past, you would turn on the channel, it would be 8 p.m. on Wednesday, you would have your show. Okay, that's not gonna happen anymore. We're going into an on-demand world, and. All three of us don't have cable any longer. I personally watch all my shows on either Hulu or iTunes. I need to be reminded, even if I love a show, you're already at that point where you love a show, you've heard about it, you want to keep watching it, you forget about it. How do you stay on top of mind? How yes. do you, right, so is that, you know, do you do a deal like, let's say, with UTA where all of the talent tweets out about the other talent show. Do you do, uh, you know, are you gonna rely on iTunes, which sends you an email and then automatically downloads that show into your queue if you subscribe? Like, what are the, what are the methods for reminding people after this discovery process is already finished? I mean, I think, it's, yeah. it's, it's amazing, we're noticing and we're measuring it very carefully that if a t piece of talent tweets about their show or about their movie coming out, it actually creates almost as much buzz as a one sheet or an ad on television or so forth. Now it has to be the right celebrity with the right following and right. you know, but but we're beginning to see that, that literally the volume of, of conversation is just as great on social media as it is uh, you know, if, if, if you're on, uh, if you put out a one sheet or if you put out an ad. And, and we're actually beginning to see that even an ad on the Super Bowl is actually not as impactful as an ad that you put out on a Facebook page or on iTunes. And, and so I think, I think we're really going to see a, a huge shift in where we spend our money and our resources because, what is it, 40, 60K to hire a social media person, right. you know, to run and build your Facebook page, and it's $3.1 million to buy a Super Bowl ad. So if I'm sitting there trying to think about where I'm going to spend money you and it's more You could spend, effective. so $3 million on like one night versus, and, and then you have someone like a Volkswagen, which does a, a, an amazing job with a viral hit with that dark, or mini right. dark. But that's lightning in a bottle. It doesn't always happen. Whereas $3 million, that amount of money could be put into a whole entire, entire daily show online and website. I mean, I always joke around what, what a content creator online would do with $3 million. A lot. I mean, depends on who you're going to produce your show. Sure. But I mean, like at What's Trending, you know, we do also a bit of earned media, and that we we see that as the future, where we do a bit of a media buy because we do believe in marketing and PR. And there, it is, you know, it is overlooked in the web world. Yeah. And it does go a long way. You know, how much, even even if a show or a movie isn't good, the awareness of it is still out there because of billboards. Right. Because of commercials, beyond even Twitter, like I want to see a web property or digital property have a billboard. 
You know, I know it sounds old school, but it does go a long way in terms of creating awareness. Plus, you have, you know, the tweeting. In terms of scheduling of uh, viewing, we see the tweeting work. We work with getglue.com a lot, um, which also reminds people. And we have social media best practices. We tell, you know, everyone from live stream to Ustream to YouTube to get glue to our guests when to tweet. And when that happens, it notifies all their communities that this is happening because unlike, you know, while we do do VOD, our, what's trending is a live show. And some people question, you know, the importance of live, you know, this day and age. If you're not a concert, a big award show, what's the point? You know, I definitely do feel that live, you know, we're going to see more of live in the next year or so. We're going to see more people experimenting it um, and figuring out what works and what doesn't. It's about being available in whichever way someone wants to consume content. So we're live, we have the whole thing VOD, and we have the whole thing cut up. So if you just want to watch the interview with Ashton Kutcher, you can just watch that. Right. Um, there's, um, let's see, what else do we want to cover? I want to make sure that we talk a little bit about... Um, Let's talk about creating web, like destinations well, versus. Yeah, okay. So, so right. yesterday night I was watching, um, I, <laughs> this will give you an idea of what kind of content I like. <laughs> I watched Gossip Girl and I watched The New Girl. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and. Deep. By the way, for the record, I also watched Gossip Girl <laughs> last night, but don't, don't admit, admit that. In the green don't room. Admit that. And, and here was my concern. So, after I watched both of these shows, um, I, was, I was highly engaged in the show. I watched it on my <laughs> laptop. One of uh, um, Gossip Girl, I subscribed to, so I got it through iTunes. New Girl, I went to Hulu. I couldn't get it because you have to wait eight days after the show airs. And I was so irritated, I wanted to watch it right then, so I went and purchased on iTunes. Okay, so just to give you an idea of how people are consuming content. I, after the show, I wanted to tweet about the show. So I go and I look up the Twitter handle for New Girl. Well, there, I couldn't find it. it apparently, twitter.com backslash New Girl, they didn't own it. I ended up having to find Liz uh, Merriweather, who writes the show, and I like tweeted her instead. It shouldn't have been such a process. I went to the website for both of these series. I was gravely disappointed in what looked like, I mean, they're nice websites, but they're they're exactly what we've been seeing for years. They, are, they were not designed with um, the sort of innovative um, thought process, which is what is it that people really want to do when they, after they're watching a show, while they're watching a show? Like, do they want to interact in certain ways? All it has is about episode cast. Like, I'm not engaged in that. It didn't seem like it was designed. It didn't add to the experience. You know, it didn't add to the experience value whatsoever. To the brand. You know, no I was, value. I was, I was actually I was, I was on another panel with uh, uh, the head of, of websites for a very large network. And I turned to him and I said, what's your job look like in 10 years, 50 years, right, 25 years? And he looked at me and he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, you know, threeletternetwork.com, like, is that really going to exist? Is that going to be around in 5, 10, 15 years? And, and he, looked, he looked dumbfounded, right? And I, do you th and I don't believe that people are going to go to a dot .com anymore to find content like you did. You know, I, I just don't think that's the future. I think it's going to be in other places. It's going to be well, on, shared on Facebook, Twitter. It's apps, always about extending so out. People say it's all about this discovery extending out. So you need to be wherever your audience is. You can't necessarily expect this day and age for them to come to you. And that's been the biggest, I guess, difficulty in the media in industry, whether it be music or publishing, it always, always like, come to us, keep it in my closed den, you must be in my home to experience this and enjoy this content, otherwise get out. And the people that we're seeing succeed are all about being open, and we're, we're gonna see more companies be open, but it is about the appification. More networks and more shows and more brands are gonna be, it's gonna be all around their app. Because as well, more internet connected yeah. TVs, come up and more people use them and it gets more mainstream, it's going to level the playing field. It's going to be an equally weighted click between um, an I Justine on YouTube right. and an NBC possibly. And those are the things we need to think about. I like that, an equally weighted click. Well, I think, <laughs> I think you need two things. One is, yeah, you, to a certain extent. By the way, you we're... can all take shots for mm -hmm. every buzzword that we I know, use during this true. panel. I think, I think you're going to see two. I mean, we, we already are seeing two things. I think everyone agrees that now your, your content has to be platform agnostic. Yeah. But I think you also, why doesn't someone reimagine what a home for a show, I mean, every show has to be a brand now. In every sense of the word, um, it must be a brand. And so there should be, someone should reimagine the user experience with these websites. Do I think there's still gonna be home for these shows? Absolutely, absolutely, there will still be homes. But 
you know, it's, it's just like, um, and we were going to talk about, maybe not, I don't know if we want to talk about it yet, but tech companies which are reimagining the way things are done. Um, Flipboard is reimagining the way magazines work. You know, and you pull content from lots of different streams and it makes your own magazine and they didn't necessarily copy the exact way that magazines, it's not like they just took a magazine and put it on your iPad. They were like, well, how could this work better? And That's what needs to happen for TV on the web. And so much talk about monetization, Flipboard has done amazing stuff with even the Colbert Report where the ads are actually inside Flipboard and, and they're really able to make, and, and I think Flipboard is a phenomenal company that is just, we've only seen the beginning of right. Flipboard and I'm so excited about what it's gonna do uh, to the future of all industries, not only magazine and, and words, but, also but TV. video like, yeah. and I mean, TV the thing and is, movies. It should play, I mean, pa uh, a company called Path in, um, out of Silicon Valley has reimagined the Facebook experience and videos play seamlessly within this app. And it's like, oh, of course, of course that's the way it should be done, right? It makes you want to click it more easily. There's also something called Chill, which uh, chill.com, which we experiment with, which started out as like the turntable FM, where people could have their own avatars and watch a video or any sort of live stream experience together. So you could see a room of actual people while you're watching the video on your browser. And now it's becoming a bit, well, not... I think as maybe sophisticated in the design, and it's not really an app, but it has like that Flipboard-esque vibe to it where it's pulling in your stream, so you log in through Facebook Connect, and whatever you're posting on Facebook or your friends are sharing, it will come up in that stream as well. Right, as I, think, I think that's an interesting point because we also talk about destination television being dead and so forth and so on, but I also think people do want a shared experience, and so yeah. things like Chill, uh, there's another company called Constellation TV, uh, or I'm sorry, it's called Constellation, and, and Constellation really uh, has, has a, you know, everyone tunes in at the same time and, and an actor will sort of interact with you or take questions mm -hmm. at the end, and, and so you buy a ticket and, and watch it. And I think, I think we're gonna start to see as more and more people maybe don't tune in at eight o'clock to watch a show, they're gonna tune in at some other time to have a shared experience online to tweet and, and Facebook and so Yeah, there is something so about forth. social media being the water cooler effect, and we see that with how, why it's working for big TV shows, where it's actually increasing the ratings of right, award like the shows. Golden Globes, yeah, I think. Right. And, and the NFL. And I think if we could create that for digital content as well, we have to have the same um, the same mentality in terms of how we create the content and how we market it. So when you have everyone talking about it and asking questions, and you, the Twitter for the show is appearing in more people's streams, and people feel like they need to be watching it then to feel part of the experience and that water cooler but, and then it will need is really to, important. It will need to, I mean, I, uh, I was watching the Giants game, well, I guess it was technically the 49ers Giants game, right, um, on Sunday, and we had, it was a group of guys, myself, and then we had Google Hangout. So in three different cities, we had all of our friends watching. Now, the experience of Google Hangout, if anyone's ever used it, not quite there, right? Not quite we there technology We could only do 10 people, wise. so. But it was just very, you know, it wasn't, but it will get there. Um, and the fact that we were watching it on our television and then had uh, the, the, the laptop with the Google Hangout, eventually it will be one seamless production where the Google, you know, Google Hangout will work perfectly and I'll, we'll be able to actually hear everyone and then we'll be able to see the show and we'll be able to, you know, and all of us were on our phones as well. I mean, this is, this is stuff that's, been talked about before, but it is, um, you know, each month it's transforming to, to be this new experience. Well, I'll tell you what shows I feel on TV are doing it properly. I feel like the late night shows are doing it really well, Jimmy, the Jimmy Fallons and the Conan O'Briens, who became, you know, very native to the web audience and who immerse themselves in digital, you know, have their own apps. And it's not just an app where it's like, oh, watch the show. Yeah. They create, you know, think of the philosophy of the TV show and the people around it, and they, they're creating offshoots, you know, offshoot apps. So, okay, this app would attract the audience and the demographic of our show, and we're providing it to them. It's not an app just with our TV show, and it allows people to connect with the brand 24-7. You know, they have original content on the sites. They, you know, cre create their Google Plus pages. They create competitions, you know, where people can submit videos. Jimmy Kimmel has done it great. If you've seen his parent videos, those videos that have gone viral, asking parents to submit funny videos of their kids opening horrible presents. You know, there's a way to inter interact. I haven't seen that, but that and, sounds awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. So I feel like late night shows are doing it really well. I feel like scripted shows could do a better job. You know, ABC has done well with their, you know, creating apps 
with Grey's Anatomy, which, you know, it, there was a se that second screen experience where, you know, it can, at different points, you know, you could connect with the characters depending on when they come on screen, and we're going to see more of that. But, you know, in unscripted and news, I haven't seen, like, so much innovation. Um, no, but, I mean, other than them putting the tweets below. I and, know, you've worked in news. What know, innovation have but, you seen in, to, in news programming in terms of how they use social and digital? Well, I think, I think again, to go back to, I think, my first point is that uh, the, the era of just showing and pulling out, let's say, a single tweet or something is sort of dead. And now we need to listen to the entire conversation about what's happening when we're reporting. And I think social media can be used as an incredible way to report. But I also think, to your point, being social and watching television isn't just about with the audience, it's also about the people who are on the show and who are you playing with the content. And the ability to break down both screens and have a genuine sort of experience that's synced with the actor on the show. Okay. So a lot of my clients will actually live tweet during the show. And you see just sort of tremendous success. Um, this actually just happened uh, with uh, Krista Smith, who's the West Coast editor of Vanity Fair. And she had a show um, where she interviewed three different people on USA, and she was live tweeting both coasts, and she was adding extra facts, and she was taking questions, and it was really a great, I mean, everyone loved it, and, and people really, and, and the networks are now really very cooperative, and they, they shout it out on air, and they say, hey, follow, you know, you, and, and so to, to break down that wall, I think, is really important, and to have that conversation. And creating a stickiness, you know, you're not just, when you're, just because you're not on air doesn't mean you're not present with your audience, and I think we need to think of um, entertainment and content more as like what, like what tech companies do. We need to think about innovation. We need to work with technologists to really innovate the experience um, and work together because it's about being on all the time if you really want to engage and connect. Andy Cohen from Bravo has done that really well. While the show's you know, on air and live, first it was once a week, but he as a character online was always around, was always giving his take on things. That created a connection with him as a personality with the brand that made people want to watch it every single day. Right. And I think we need to think up more outside the box with the, pers the personalities and the talent that we work with, but then also the shows. How can you make that live and breathe 24 seven, create more stickiness? Well, one of the, one of the things that I always recommend to um, producers or to networks is, Give, I don't care if it's scripted, unscripted, it doesn't really matter. Give everyone a flip cam, some sort of video camera, have them just record everything. Behind the scenes are huge. There are, and two things are huge. Behind the scenes are huge, bloopers are huge. Huge, like we wanna see what's really happening. I think people are fascinated by the process far more than anyone realizes. And I think that, um, you know, reality shows have certainly sort of, opened us up to the idea that people want to see what's going on behind the scenes, but I think we still haven't, I don't think necessarily network execs have gotten on board with the give Let's, your actors uh, the can, flip cam. Can I, so uh, on Twitter, I'm, I'm following the conversation and, and feel free to tweet to any of us, and uh, Tom OB uh, tweeted to me and he said, uh, TV people still look at, at web stuff and sort of what we're talking about as a, as a rounding error in their budgets. How do we uh, go in there, and I, and I think you've spoken with a lot of executives and so have I, and, and really sort of change their uh, viewpoints of how to use social and, and how to use web? Or do you think it's just sort of a matter of time? I mean, I think it's, I mean, I think that they're starting to, to change. I mean, I think, I don't but, see but a lot. When, budget, when you have the top 10 ca YouTube channels getting bigger audiences than the top 10 cable networks, you have to think there is a shift that needs to happen. And it's going to happen no matter what, so you either jump on board, the train has already left the station. So you either go with it or you're going to get stuck. We've seen it in every media business. We've seen it in publishing. We've seen it in music. And I think we're seeing it in television and broadcast. And something needs to happen. But there I think will... everyone agrees with yeah, that. Yeah, and everyone like, agrees I, with that. I don't I think that that's a huge debate anymore. No, but anymore. it's true. What it's I a do rounding error that... because of the money. I mean, listen, the fact is there's not as much. The millions of dollars that you get from marketing well, spends don't... and advertising is not as big as it's it is. It's the cable subscription that's the, the big dollar difference really it's not and yeah. obviously and advertising but I mean a lot of the networks are getting you know the bulk of their money from cable subscriptions but it's but beyond that I think I think what we're going to see is just um, monetizing a hell of a lot more content instead of just a 22 minute show you'll have what I like to call cutting room content 
all of those tiny little pieces, you'll have people editing those together, making them interesting, and then monetizing off of also them. Also, ancillary in businesses right, which around is, the brand, which which is what I started about. out yeah. saying. I mean, I think that they're you know in the future, I think it will look like this. You finish that episode of Gossip Girl. Will it be twenty two or I guess forty four? Will it be forty four minutes? Um, and you know, twenty episodes in a season? Like why? Maybe not. Maybe that's not what it's going to look like. It will be whatever you know, whatever feels right. But then after that, you'll have your little um, shopping cart, whether it's networks doing deals with Amazon and all of the music that they play on that show, you'll have the ability to purchase. All of the items that they are wearing on the show, maybe you want to take a vacation to wherever they are. Maybe you like the hotel that they featured. I don't know. There are so many ways to monetize far beyond advertising mm -hmm. um, there's, with there's these brands. New, there's a new fashion show on NBC where after the show, the clothes that they design are available, like literally the that's next perfect. day, on at like Kmart and, and a bunch of different places. And that's exactly and how that's it should be really done. That's really smart, I think. Well, I just think as more money, like what, what, what there are subscription models, obviously in cable, but what we're seeing now is when you could prove that the ad money is there, and ad money is moving more in digital. I mean, I don't know what the s statistics are for this year, but it has increased. So I think as the money people see that, they start saying, "Oh, okay, this makes sense," even though. It's not as, the budgets are just not as big, but I think it's more the engagement and it's the extending the brand promise and making the brand valuable and relevant. Well, and also sure, and of course, targeted of niches course. Are, are, you know, unless you're a car company, I think that targeted niches are far more powerful. For example, who would you rather advertise with, uh, a, you know, I don't know, a, a random show, let's say you have a makeup brand and you're, you're attempting to target a demo of women from, age 14 to age 35. Are you gonna advertise an American Idol, which is gonna cost you millions and millions of dollars, or are you gonna go with a makeup blogger, um, v-blogger, v-logger on YouTube, who, where people, they're going to YouTube to watch makeup tutorials with, in, with the thought in mind, I need new makeup tips. Like, obviously, you're going to advertise right, with that person. That's yeah. just a no-brainer. And you're, 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 beginning, you're beginning to see, you know, whether, and whether or not we agree on the algorithm and stuff, you know, clout and clout perks and things to, to and really target of, exactly. the, the specific people. And I, and I think we're going to see more and more of that. Well, and I also was going to ask you a question. Um, I think some of the smart networks, if you look at the deals that they're doing with talent, especially with new talent, mm -hmm. um, people who don't have a lot of clout, but in the, not the, the company clout. Um, they're looking at what happened with The Biggest Loser and Jillian Michaels. They established her as a huge personality, but they don't own anything she does. So all of her book sales, they don't get any sort of revenue from that, it, as far as I know. Um, now the deals that the TV networks are doing always seem to include things like we own whatever you do in the future, whether it's a clothing line, whether it's a book, whether it's um, a cook, you know, cooking utensils, you know, whatever it is, we own it. We own part of it at least. So when we establish your brand, so I think TV networks are sort of gonna go into, in a sense, like, um, I just wonder if the YouTube people, like YouTube stars aren't gonna allow that because they're so, well, um, you know, they're so protective of their brands and they've spent so much time building it. So we saw someone like Fred gave up his YouTube channel to Nickelodeon for his show, but there, a lot of people have decided to walk away from deals, big network deals and working with mainstream media because they don't want to give up that ownership. And I think we will see a future where the possibly the, they will have that in mind as they bring, they create someone. Right. But if they're going to do deals with people who are established online and in digital, they're going to have to be very creative. But hey, is, hey, guys, yeah. let's, yeah, let's we, go we only, the, No, no, we, we only have 10 minutes left, and, and we want to also take some questions. But very quickly, why don't we mention one company that we're really excited about that we haven't really you just met, you met Flipboard. discussed. Flipboard well, was no, one of my, my favorite company right now is a company called Dwala, D W O L L A. It's totally redefining the payment process. It's the new PayPal. They don't go through credit card companies. They, um, they only take 25 cents on every transaction as opposed to PayPal, which takes 2.5%. Um, I think that there's a huge opportunity for entertainment companies to get on board with that kind of thing, um, payment transactions, or you're purchasing things right away um, through the show. I'm obsessed with that idea. How about you? I was going to mention, I mentioned two of my ones. <laughs> <laughs> Chill and Get Glue were just big oh, fans. Oh, Get Glue, yeah. Yeah, Get Glue. I mean, I mentioned that, though, when I was uh, talking. So. Um, 
mine, I think, is uh, is Shelby TV, which is a new app oh, yeah. that pulls in. It's sort of like Flipboard, but but for video content. Um, it came out of TechStars in New York. Really great guys, and and I'm excited to see. How, it's just in the very beginning, and, and I'm excited. I think we're going to hear more about it, and, and it's going to be a really cool company. Well, I have, wait, I have two more companies to mention. Pinterest. If anyone's Love, ever heard huge, of Pinterest, right. um, this is an I. Um, it's a an online scrapbook, if you will. Um, so envision all your talent having these online scrapbooks, and you can you can sort of. Um, you get a different perspective on people from that. And then there's a company called Wantworthy out of Techstars in New York, which um, does sort of innovative shopping cart experience where it can pull different things from the web, um, like a much better version of an Amazon shopping cart, and you can send out collections to people. Very All right, I have two more companies. My, okay. <laughs> I was like, All right, why don't we go, why don't we look this up? We can put up on questions? Google. Yeah. Yeah. Let, we'll let's tweet, line follow up. us on Twitter, and you'll see all the companies and, and people that we support. And let's like. let's line up for, if, if anyone has any questions, feel free to go to the mic. Anyone have any questions? Otherwise, I'm going to talk to you about my two favorite companies. <laughs> all right, what, all right, I see wait, this wait, one. We have, the, we have some movement. No, Come, come to the mic. We can't hear you. No. Our just... audience watching at home. Uh, right. We have, we have millions of people watching you via ever... live stream. Right. Millions. Um, so the measurement, uh, measurement is kind of a big problem in all mm -hmm. the web delivery because, not because we can't measure it, but there's accepted ways that people buy and sell media, right, on the big screen, and there fundamentally aren't on the small screen. I wonder how important a role you think measurement will play in the development of a market for the content and monetization. So I, think that's I, I actually think it's the other way around. It's, it is. I, I, I feel like you can measure to the second online more so than you can. Like who knows how relevant, to be honest, right. Nielsen. So, so maybe the question is. is, because the problem is, even though right, we know you can measure how long somebody's on and clicks and views and all that stuff, but it's not accepted by the people who say, I want to spend 20 million more on this or that. That's well, I, I think I think we're yeah. starting to see it. Yeah. I think we're starting to see it. I think I mean I think that the the technology for measurement online is extraordinary, and it's only getting better to the point where you I mean you uh, you literally see where <laughs> they stop watching your video. You know where they got bored because they clicked away, um, and I think that that's that's a fascinating. Um, I think it's scary for a lot of um, television television executives because or any you know frankly, any content provider. Because the last thing you want is you put out content no and, you can, and you can prove that people are bored during it, right? Like, ah, uh, they clicked away or no one watched this. But um, I think, you know, that's just a shift that's happening. I've seen a huge difference just in the last three years in terms of the sophistication of measurement techniques. Um, I think that we'll continue to see that. I think we'll also see it in a positive way. Like, I, um, this is slightly different, but I, I think instead of just liking a show, on Facebook, I think we'll be able to like scenes. Like, you know how people will do movie quotes? I think we'll be able to pull scenes and like the scene instead. So you'll, you'll have that sort of, neat, like, this is exactly what I like. There there the line on The Office. <laughs> this is the line I liked. And people will be able to there, there are two content. There are two companies, yeah. I agree. There are two yeah. companies out of uh, Cambridge that I think are really interesting that are looking at this. Um, one is called Crimson Hexagon, which really yeah. measures sentiment on, on social media. They partnered with Twitter. I think it's, it's a phenomenal company that really does amazing work. Um, and the other is Bluefin, uh, which yeah, just, raised just raised $12 million. Um, you know, and, and, I, and I, we can talk all day about this, but, but those are two companies that are really trying to measure in a smart way, not only social media or digital on digital, but also how it leaps to traditional and so forth. And in forth. terms of buys on YouTube, we're seeing companies like a full screen um, that they actually, like they'll work with brands and they, they'll put your message across many YouTube channels that have a certain amount of traffic or followers. And so you're getting that brand integration, call outs by YouTubers, depending on you know how big you wanna get or how little you want to get and that domino effect that's like the future of the advertising where it's not going to be a pre-roll or a banner ad you know on the YouTube um, video but it'll actually be people the personalities themselves giving a shout out to a show or a brand to check out and they're enabling that experience where you do a buy you have you know per click and everything and so there are more companies like that popping up that are creating these networks on YouTube 
And we're seeing it also, you know, another company. If you're going to talk about startups, like startup content creator startups, like we have the Maker Studios, mm -hmm. the Machinimas. Um, those are people that are talking about the nexus of tech and entertainment. They're taking advantage of tech platforms to build content networks, and that's really the future. Well, and, and also, of course, for advertisers, the excitement really is um, the ability to convert from someone who's just seeing an ad to someone who's a consumer. And I, I mean, I this is somewhat obvious point, but I don't think it's point. It's I don't think people really think about the power of this when you're, you know, when you're reading a paper magazine, you like best case scenario, you see an ad and you tear it out and you're like, I gotta buy this product. Best case scenario, right? The same goes for television. You see an ad and maybe you remember it, maybe. And if you're at the store, perhaps you purchase it. But I mean if you're on a YouTube video or online even, not so much with Hulu, but online, you know, you should be able to click right there and purchase it right away when you're, that's impulse buy, like the best kind of impulse buy. Yeah, we're, we're trying to teach the brands that we're working with, you know, for what's trending, we do do media buys with them, but it's also brand alignment and relevance and the people, the influencers that they're aligning themselves with. And I think that will go a very long way. Why should they pay, you know, one celebrity millions of dollars to tweet once, maybe show up at a party where you're part of a really, a niche community where the word of mouth when they talk about your product and you aligning yourself with them goes a much longer way. Well, and that's the difference between brand awareness and actually purchasing. Like you might yeah. measure on television how many people saw that ad. You, you know, I mean, and I suppose you could try to, I mean, I guess that this is what they do, try to compare it with what the sales are the and maybe you think that they can. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah, let's go, go. let's go if someone else has another question. Yeah. I don't know if anyone does. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, let's change the subject, but no one has a question. Great job, Eric. <laughs> anyone else have a question? Or All right, tweet let's if keep you're on, scared. Let's keep on talking. But I think, you know, I think it's important to discuss how to make money with content. Is, is it, listen, I think everyone agrees content Where are you guys all coming from? Like, who's content creator here? Who's from a network? Advertiser, brands? What are you guys, the group over there? Distributors. Distributors. Got it. And now, how? Are, what is your take on where you know how yeah, you're? I know. I would minutes. love someone. To All right, wait, wait. Let's do. Not, let's do this. Off. Let's do yeah. this. How many people? Yeah. How many people this week have checked Facebook? <laughs> okay, so like seventy percent plus or minus. How many people have checked Twitter this week? Okay, like a okay. couple hands. How Three many people percent. have gone on Google Plus? One person. Two people, Two people. Three people. Okay. Uh, how many people um, checked in uh, to this hotel on Foursquare? One, <laughs> one, like one person. You're awesome. awesome. Okay. Um, what, what else? Where do you That's good. But Eric, I want to know, because you work with um, you know, new media and traditional, for distributors, you know, since we have a few here, where's their place in all of this if more traditional distributors? Where's their place? In the mean? digital space, like how could they take advantage of what's going on in digital um, to monetize and I guess get the word out? You know, I mean, I think I think going full circle, it's it's how it's how we find the content, mm -hmm. and I think it's going to be my friends who are sharing it and posting. I love your thing about liking scenes. I think that's huge. I think you know, so it'll be how how we get it out on the social web. Do you have one quick question? There we go. Some interaction. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have kind of a complicated question. All right, you have thirty <laughs> seconds. Go. I, um, I produce content for the Middle East, oh. and we have literally the, the target audience that, is, that has uh, surpassed the networks. When you get a four-year-old nephew that goes up to the screen and he's trying to swipe to change channels. Right. And oh, that's then awesome. you have the networks who are not, they don't even have apps, or they are very late, or the most they can do is a Facebook page, or SMSs, and they have reality TV shows. I mean, they would buy, uh, they would buy uh, Fremantle uh, formats like Idol, and it's got talent. But there is not that interactivity in the background. How do you catch up with, I mean, how do you get the networks to catch up with what the audiences are doing? I mean, I think you show them the potential. Because I think once you have an, I think you give them the experience that you can have. A case study. What, yeah. yeah, once you yeah. see that experience. And also, I think, to your point about your nephew who's trying to, I did you, there's this great video online of, a, of like a toddler trying to do that on a magazine trying to go like this, which is obviously the iPad swiping, and they're like, why won't this magazine work, right? They don't understand. That's not how magazines work. I think the idea that um, children are, you know, they're, they're really digital natives, and they don't see things the way we do. 
hanging out with kids while they have a truly interactive um, content experience, whether that's with Nickelodeon or Disney, which frankly they do. I think they're doing some of the best interactive experiences of any of the content providers because they're marketing directly to children who are digital natives. But, but can I say to the, to the start of your question and to almost challenge the premise of your question, your question is when can networks catch up? But you're in the Middle East right now, which is a hotbed yeah. of possibilities and a hotbed for innovation, right? And so I would almost argue, why are you asking when the networks are going to catch up? Create something new, innovate, right? There's all this VC money, not all, but there's a lot of VC money that's coming in in the Middle East. There's a woman by the name of Leslie Jump that started a VC firm out in the Middle East, right? And, and you're beginning to see innovation and new technology, and I think you're at this amazing sandbox where you can create, where, forget about oh, everything traditional or yeah. everything, right? Create something new, like go, go big, you know? Yeah, that's, I think, there's going to be tremendous opportunity coming out of the Middle East uh, with new technology and stuff that nobody here is talking about because we can't even imagine it yeah. at this second in time. We have the tools right now to prove the models. Like, we don't need to wait for the, the bigger companies to jump on board. I, I think we, you know, technology allows us to create, and that's completely empowering, and that's going to enable a new generation of leaders and innovators to really rise. And, and then at a certain point, networks realize, and that's what you know, was happening with the social media stars and the YouTube stars, right. where they realize, oh, we need to align with them. Right. But the fact is they had the time to create that community and that engagement and really test the waters and experiment. And that's well, what this, uh, the online world is all about. The, the barriers to entry. Of course, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the barriers to entry for this kind of thing are pretty low. Tweet, so. <laughs> tweet us and we'll, we'll tweet, tweet you back. Us. Yeah. <laughs> what is it, I think someone said the other day it was a beta. Um, God, what did they say? This is this is the beta happy or something. Beta happy world. I have no idea. But you just just try it. Like it's you know beta I mean, enabled world. Beta. No, what did they say? I forget. Someone said it was the best line. Oh, anyway, come back. And I'll tweet about. Does it. Does anyone else have any questions? <laughs> Anyone else? All right, well, I think we'll, yeah. we'll hang out, and uh, please, yeah, we're all online, and, uh, and we, we tweet and Facebook. Yeah, let's and, say our Twitter handles. Yeah, let's do I'm that. I'm at Shira Lazar. Follow the show, What's Trending.com. We're live all the time. We're doing Oscar shows, so every Thursday live. Check it out. I'm at Kuhn, K-U-H-N. What's Trending.com. It's right there. That's what it's oh, sorry. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's so excited. Um, and I'm at Julia Allison. Just my name over there. Great. And we're all verified on Twitter. We are. We are all verified. So you're speaking to very <laughs> three verified three people. verified people. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for Thanks, having guys. us. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Hope we woke Have you fun. up. <laughs>